Ah, I'd like to welcome you to EMU Today, and we're so pleased that you were able to join us. We want you to sit back and relax and enjoy the great conversations that we're going to have. Sarah Potteracki, welcome back. Thank you so much. It's fantastic to be here again. Coming back for year two. Mm-hmm. How was your first year? Um, I learned a lot. I definitely did. And I'm coming back here today feeling a lot more prepared <laughs> and like I've uh, got some skills for the future. You've got a lot <laughs> of skills. And we want to thank you all for certainly tuning in. Last year, the response to EMU Today has been has been overwhelming. We've enjoyed it. And we're so glad that you're all coming back to us. We have a very special show, and I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Jim Smith, the president of Eastern Michigan University. Dr. Smith, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mark, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be back. It's always good to have you. You were here a year ago and, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of provided us an overview of the university. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate it. Did you have a good summer? I did. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, busy, but good. And, yeah. uh, and, and this semester is off to a good start? It's off to a busy and uh, very good start. And uh, lots going on. And uh, as we always expect in the fall, the transition from really warm weather to uh, unusually <laughs> oh, yeah. cool weather like today is, uh, is a challenge for us on Gable. And we're going to come back and unpack a major address that you gave recently. But before we do that, Sarah, i got to ask you a question. Are you registered to vote? I am. Yeah. We have some major midterm elections upcoming uh, in a not-too-distant future. Why is it important from your perspective for people to vote? I feel like a lot of people my age don't seem to realize that if we don't vote, then people of different age groups are making all of the decisions for us and therefore we will just have to deal with those decisions later on down the road. Yeah, and, and Dr. Smith, I have to tell you, according to a recent report in the Atlantic, about 28 percent of young voters say they will vote in the upcoming midterm elections. Uh, those are specifically between 18 and 29 year, years old. Talk to us about, from your perspective as the leader of a major university, an administrator, as a voter, talk about the importance to get out to vote. Well, I think Sarah hit the importance of one element is that um, older demographics seem to vote in larger number. So you have the voice of an older demographic if a younger demographic doesn't vote. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part that I think is really critical for university administrators like me is to, uh, to have our students who often are very frustrated about things like what does the state contribute to my education? To look at those candidates that are pro higher education or pro K-12 and then support those candidates. It's a little bit of work. You have to do a little bit of research. You have to go to some forums. We do a lot of those things here on campus. Uh, take advantage of those, be well informed, and then turn out to vote. Critically important. But you know, Sarah, it, it is a lot of work, but you know it's work, that, it's work that's well worth it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's worth it to do the extra research. Uh, on the candidates is well worth it because people have literally died for the right to vote. And, and we're certainly living in times where it's important that we encourage as many people to get out there and, and cast their ballots. Mm -hmm. it's, there's this overall thought of, well, I'll just worry about it later when I'm a real adult. But the thing is, you're an adult now. Yeah. And you need to start making these decisions and you need to seek out the information and you need to get out and vote. So, so before I go to Dr. Smith, I'm going to look at all of us here and encourage as many of us, if not all of us, 100% of you to get out there and vote in the upcoming midterm elections. Dr. Smith, I'm going to come back over to you. Um, you recently gave a major address to the entire university community. I believe it was the university, the state of the university address. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Yeah. Kind of give us a perspective on the, the context of your comments. Why did you decide to do it? I think it's never been done before. And then here's some of the highlights from it. Well, first, I, I don't know when the last time it was done, Mark. It looks like it hasn't been done during the course of the last two or three presidents. Uh, this is my second presidency. I was in South Dakota for seven years. I did one every year. I thought it was good for the faculty, the staff, and the students to hear where we were coming out of a summer break, going forward to fall and then into winter and then into spring. Uh, so uh, two years ago, we began talking about it. Last year, we thought it would happen, and time just got away from us. The best time to do it really is the beginning of the year. It sets the stage for the year. So uh, I took the opportunity. It's about 50 minutes long. We did it uh, both live and on telecast so people could watch it from their office and actually it's data archived so you can watch it and, mm -hmm. and if you want to watch it on uh, on your uh, computer screen you can do that uh, but really talking about who we are where we're going uh, what challenges we have in front of us but what we have to celebrate from all the successes in the course of I have usually looked at about a six to eight month time horizon of the successes we've had as a university. 
You know, it's interesting, Sarah, you know, you're a student here, mm -hmm. and it's important. Sometimes we get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day activities. You, you go to class and you study, and I don't think sometimes even our students have pulled the lens back to see the big picture. Yes, looking through the address, I really enjoyed, because it's several pages long, there's a transcript that was sent out to all the students, and I just, I really enjoyed looking at that and seeing all of the positive impacts that we as a campus community have through all of the organizations that are available to us. And it was really just inspiring to see all of the different organizations you touched on. And, and let's talk about some of the key highlights, Dr. Smith. What were some of the, you, you were here about a year ago, you gave mm -hmm. us an update. Right. So since that time, uh, hit some of the key highlights from this year's address. What were some of the, the things that you really want to focus on as we think about this particular academic year and beyond? Well, I think the most important part for me is to talk about who we are as an institution. What makes, what's our DNA? What makes us who we are? And I think if you look at every part of EMU, it's about being a campus of opportunity. We give students opportunities that other places don't. And so I spent a little time talking about that. 30% of our incoming fre freshmen, uh, incoming first year class, identifies by their own self-identification as members of a minority group. That's very unusual in regional college uh, attendance patterns. I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about financial aid and the importance of financial aid to making that campus of opportunity come to life for these students. Spoke a little bit about our new forward scholarship. Uh, you pay for two years, we pay for two years. Uh, that does have a requirement to live in the resident hall, residence hall mm -hmm. all four years. So I want to make sure people understood that packaging. And then I wanted to talk about, as Sarah said, some of the points of pride that people just don't know. Clinical Research Administration, the number one master's mm -hmm. program in America. Uh, our clinical psychology program, one of the top five in America. Those are things that people just don't, if you don't consume EMU today or other media like that, you don't know it. Yeah. And you know, one of the challenges that uh, you and I got into a discussion not too long ago, there was a surprising data point that I saw where it said the number of high school students will be declining in terms of that, the source of, of students for colleges by, I think, five or ten years. It's going to decline significantly. What, how, what's the strategy behind getting more students engaged in, in terms of focusing on en enrollment growth for the university? Well, you've seen a strategy that's, that's purposeful on our part. Two years ago, we did in-state and out-of-state being equalized. So someone like Sarah, who comes to us from Wisconsin, would, if she came today, pay the same amount that a student would be from Sault Ste. Marie mm. or would be from Kalamazoo. Uh, why is that strategy? Because equalizing cost is one attraction factor. People don't leave their state if they can stay in their state mm -hmm. cheaper than coming to Michigan. The second one was a big step for us this summer, equalizing international. So an international student can come to us from Bombay, uh, Mumbai as it is today, <laughs> um, and they'll pay the same amount as a student living in the state. It's not, not for graduate students yet, but for undergraduate students we've equalized that. And then our online presence. The more we're online, the more we can send out our instruction virtually to any state in the nation. Southern states are growing. Northern, Midwestern states are declining. That's, that's our strategy point. So let me ask you from an online standpoint, have you taken online classes? Yes. Yeah. I absolutely love whenever I can have the opportunity to take one. I try to slam one on my schedule because I'm very active in the theater department, very active around campus, and anything I can do where I don't have to physically go and sit in a class really helps me get more involved. And, and that seems to be the trend on a go-forward basis as we think about how technology has just become pervasive in our lives all over the place, if you will. Uh, so what you're telling me and telling us is that there's certainly a demand for that, that type of educational opportunity for our students. There is. It's not for everyone, Mark. I, I think we, you know, we need to put the caveat out there. For someone like Sarah, it works really, really well. She likes it. There are other students that say, no, I need to have the constant interaction with Mark Lee as my professor, having Mark remind me that I've got a midterm next Thursday, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. But for those that are self-regulated learners, uh, online is very convenient, allows some of our students work two and three jobs a semester. It allows them to get a few extra hours in their place of work and allows them to also do their coursework. Do you have a question for, for Dr. Smith? I really just wanted to go back and touch on the equalizing of um, tuition, was mm -hmm. it? Yes, that was actually the reason I came to Eastern. 
I had several different options and all of my in-state options in Wisconsin actually cost more for me to go to, like a, a decent amount more. And when it came down to at the end of the day, I looked at the program, I looked at the school and what pulled me in was going, I could afford this a lot better. So watching that become an opportunity for more people over time has been awesome. We're going to clip this and make a commercial out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, exactly okay. the, it's exactly the kind of discussion that we think happens in families around the country. Mm -hmm. And it's not just someone, Wisconsin's, you know, depending on how you go one state away or two, depending on how you travel. Um, but we have students that come far afield that say, I looked at the price point, I looked at the scholarship opportunities, Eastern was the best the best opportunity for me. And one that I didn't do at the State of the University address is now theater, a program near and dear to your heart, mm -hmm. is in the top 15 in the country. Yes. And I wish that would have been out when I did the State of the University address. It wasn't, but that also plays into how people make decisions. Really strong programs, really good price point. And, and we have less than a minute together remaining, but I will say it was not out as part of the university address, but guess what? It's out now. It is out now. Yeah. Absolutely. It is out now. We're going to make yeah. sure this is, we want to send this program to all of our alums and people watching the general population. But before we wrap up, i got to ask you, in our closing uh, 30 seconds or so, uh, are you still having fun? I do. I have fun yeah, every day. Despite the challenges? I have fun every day. It, certainly we all have challenges. Uh, Back to the voting, I wish we had legislators who uh, would roll back those dollars to the old days of 2003, <laughs> 2004, 2005, but we still have fun every day. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the challenges, certainly living in a challenged environment economically in terms of the, the income rolling into the state and, the, and in terms of growth. But Dr. Smith, we really want to thank you for coming in and spending time and sharing with us your vision, your thoughts for the university. Thank you. Thanks my, for having me. My pleasure. We're going to go to Derricka Bennett for a report on the office of the Ombuds. It is an office with a strange name that students don't always recognize or understand who we are or what we do. If you're an EMU student and believe you've been graded unfairly, well, the office of the Ombuds, located here inside the Student Center, is here to help you resolve those conflicts and navigate university policies. The Office of the Ombuds is a unique office here on campus that really anything related to Eastern Michigan, students can come and talk to us about. If they have complaints, concerns, issues, policies, processes across the institution in any experiences that they're having, they can come talk to us about what's happening and we'll try and help them develop a plan to resolve that issue. It could be related to their classroom, it could be related to registration, billing, their um, experience living on campus, really anything in general. Ultimately, our office isn't a decision maker in any of those processes. So when a student communicates with us, we're really trying to figure out how we can get them into policies or processes that can try and figure out what's happening. And if they're looking for a different outcome or decision or potentially a grade, that that process would help to figure out if that's a potential option. There really are some policy specific things related to grievances and appeals across campus. So the kind of each issue has its own means or process for trying to resolve that issue. And they all kind of have their own unique timelines. So part of what we'll try and do is help figure out what is that timeline, what steps does a student need to take, following up related to each of those steps, and then build out what that plan could look like. In terms of the great grievance policy, that timeline really focuses within semesters. So if you get a grade at the end of a semester, say it's the fall term, you get your grade in December, there's a time frame that starts up in January related to processing that concern. If you do run into problems or concerns or issues, address them as soon as possible. I think a lot of times, especially when we run into problem situations, some of our initial instincts can be like, well, I'm just not gonna deal with this right now and maybe it'll work itself out. And I think a lot of times that can ultimately continue to snowball and just grow bigger and bigger or it impacts other things. And pretty soon you're in a situation where you really don't know what to do then. I think it's important for students to know about the Office of the Ombuds because we can really help them navigate an institution that can seem kind of large. I think we really help to inform students about what their options are. There's a lot of policies at the university and it can be difficult to know what options you have. Sometimes you feel like, I don't know if I really have any options here to resolve this. Do I just have to accept that this happened? And being able to come talk with our office about, is that really the case? Do you have some sort of policies or processes that you could go to to try and get a different outcome than where you're at right now? And even just to get information clarified. 
I think we're a great resource to help students work through all of those pieces, ultimately to be able to make the best decisions for themselves during their educational career here. I think one thing that many students don't know about this office is out of our individual communications with students, we kind of keep track of the data that we collect on student concerns and complaints that are shared. And then annually, we work with administrators across campus to try and make institutional improvement. So the complaints and concerns that students share with our office, we really take them into consideration and we try and think about how we can help improve the student experience overall. And so we value that feedback. Once again, the Office of Umbuzz is located inside the Student Center, room 248. Office hours are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. You can also reach them by phone and email. I'm Derek Bennett reporting for EMU Today. Thanks, Derek, for that outstanding report. It's always good to see what's happening here around the campus of Eastern Michigan University. We want to welcome you back to this particular, our second year of doing this show, and we really appreciate the opportunity. Myself, I'm Mark Esley. I'm here with Sarah, Sarah Parecki. Thanks for coming back. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. So nice to see you again. Absolutely. <laughs> so what we want to do is to segue. We got information from Dr. Smith in the opening few moments of the show talking about the State of the University Address, and we continue to attract top personnel here at Eastern Michigan, and I'm so pleased to welcome Dr. Kenneth Lord. He was appointed Dean of Eastern Michigan University's College of Business in the summer of 2018. If I recall correctly, you came here from California. Is that right, Dr. Ward? That's correct. Well, it's so good to have you, and welcome to Eastern Michigan. Why, thank you. We are so glad to have you. And uh, talk to us briefly about your background, because I know that you have an extensive educational background, but talk to us about the most recent experience, and why did you decide to come to Eastern Michigan University? Okay, most recently, I worked for five years at California State University at Northridge. Um, and one thing that really has excited me about coming here, uh, actually a number of things have, but let, let me speak to two or three. Uh, we heard a few minutes ago from President Smith about the, the profile of this student population. Uh, that to me is something that's thrilling. I'm a first generation college student myself and uh, I have found that some of my greatest satisfaction in my career has come from helping to bring about opportunity for other students who might not have that same degree of, of opportunity at any number of other institutions that we could, that we could mention. Mm -hmm. uh, and that to me is a source of immense satisfaction to see the, the struggles, the efforts, the commitment, uh, the, the focus on education that these students bring and to be able to work with an outstanding faculty and staff to contribute to that. Uh, other things that have been very meaningful to me and were as I consider this opportunity, certainly the people who work here. What a dynamic, wonderfully accomplished, deeply dedicated group of faculty and staff. Um, you know, just, just since I started, for instance, uh, just to show you that this is something that's been going on for a long period of time and continues even right up to the present moment. Uh, one of our long-standing faculty members uh, was posthumously inducted into the Adcroft, Adcraft mm. Hall of Fame this summer um, for one of only 10 or 11 people whose lifetime contributions to that industry were being recognized. Yeah. And almost simultaneously with that, we had another faculty member in the same department in which she had served receiving a Best Paper Award from a major international conference over in Malaysia. So for a long period of time and right up to the present day, we have faculty who are just at the top of their disciplines, but more important than that, who are superb educators and care deeply about, and I, and I can say the same thing over and over again about our staff. That's outstanding. And, and sir, you, you take classes, you've taken classes in the College of Business as well. I'm fortunate enough to, to uh, teach and lecture over at the College of Business. What has been, from your perspective, your experience over at the College of Business? I feel like when I walk into the College of Business, I see a lot of very well-dressed students. <laughs> That's always my first impression, because I'm running in there and I'm kind of scrappy looking sometimes. But a lot of just very, very professional people and people who are clearly very passionate about the careers that they're going into. Yeah. And, and Dr. Ward, as we talk about the College of Business, uh, clearly 
it's gotten some very high rankings. There's, I think it was uh, named in the top business school in the country or in the Midwest, according to the Princeton Review. Is that okay. right? Okay. Uh, we are listed among the top business schools by Princeton by Review. By Princeton Review. Um, they don't have a ranking number one through whatever. They, uh, they, the they look at accredited business schools and then they select those that are uh, according to their metrics, uh, excellent, and they put together a, an annual book that uh, identifies top biz leading business schools throughout the nation. But uh, beyond that, we have a number of, of other rankings and recognitions. We're accredited by AACSB International, with that in and of itself uh, being accredited by the premier accrediting organization for business programs around the world places us among the top 5%, less than 5% of the of business degree granting institutions internationally. Mm -hmm. but then you look at things like our integrated marketing communication program, uh, which has been ranked among the top programs in that subdiscipline of marketing for a, a number of years. And you look more recently at the rising recognition of our programs. Our HR.com uh, in February of 2018 came out with their, their newest rankings and Eastern Michigan University was ranked number one mm. for uh, a diploma program with an emphasis on HR that's at the undergraduate level. Our graduate program, our uh, Master of Science in, uh, in HROD, was ranked number uh, two for um, master's programs with an emphasis on leadership and organizational development. Uh, our so a continuing education program, a certificate program, was ranked number one among such programs within, in the nation, among such programs mm -hmm. with an emphasis on HR. Uh, our programs are just rising to a level of recognition that it makes it a real honor to be here and contribute to their continuing This growth. is why I love doing this show as well, because you taught me things mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't know about. Did you know that some of those statistics about the uh, COB? But since I spend most of my time on main campus, mm -hmm. I'm honestly pretty blind to a lot of the stuff going on with the College of Business. But anytime I hear about it, it's always positive. There's always people just ranting and raving about everything that they've experienced over there. And, and, and Dr. Ward, you referenced, uh, we know you're, you're the new dean, well, you're the dean now of, of the College of Business. Talk to us about your priorities for this particular academic year and then where you see it going over the next, uh, certainly the, the two to three year period as well. Okay. Well, some of these were certainly well articulated by President Smith, and we as a college are firmly committed to doing our part to realize that, that uh, very visionary perspective that he brings to our institution. Uh, the focus on student success is critical. Um, we, uh, that means we need to work on increasing student retention. We need to work on increasing student graduation rates. You know, from the perspective of the dean of a professional college, uh, student success means that, and it means more. It means preparing our students in rich, substantive ways for career success that will last a lifetime beyond retaining them and keeping them through to graduation here. Uh, and that, that is a key focus of, of where we'll be investing some of our efforts. Um, and part of that is reaching out to ever larger number, larger and higher level uh, recruiters mm -hmm. to be there on campus recruiting our students. So that's, that's a key factor that we're going to be working on uh, in the year ahead and in the coming years. Programmatically, uh, there are some rich opportunities before us. We've just uh, had approved within the last year a Master of Science and Finance program. Now with that comes uh, some wonderful functionalities that will really help all of our students and even non-business students have a level of, of comfort and training and even certification through Bloomberg terminals, through uh, state-of-the-art databases and software. Uh, things that in the finance world uh, professionals would certainly recognize, mm -hmm. but our students haven't always had the opportunity to get to get that training in like CRISP and CompuStat and Morningstar and so on. Mm -hmm. um, we are, I was speaking with uh, an alumnus of our Master of Science and in Information Systems program before I left California. He's a senior partner 
of one of the big four accounting firms, but on the information system side in the Silicon Valley area. Mm -hmm. He's familiar with our programs and he said he looks to our MIS program as a potential major feeder for Silicon Valley. Uh, the leading technical of place Absolutely. in the country, if not the world. Absolutely. And, um, and so the opportunities that are, that are there are great. And I know our, our information systems faculty have been working on uh, producing a plan for an even improved and updated version over the outstanding program that they've been offering, including things like offering what may, it may very well be the first course in this market on blockchain. Yeah. which is projected to have some transformational impact across business disciplines in the years in, ahead. In, in a cozy minute or so together, um, you know, one, of the thing, one of the greatest joys that I have as, as, a, as a, an adjunct here is watching my students graduate and they connect with me via social media and they keep in touch with me and they reach out constantly and I'm able to track their careers. Mm -hmm. And so even as a, yes, I'm a business professional and I, I teach here, but to me that's the greatest joy is maintaining that relationship so we have our minister together. You, you had mentioned the word connect and that's something that I think speaks volumes about the, the COB is the level of connectivity with businesses in the, De like the Metro Detroit area. Because I, my professor bribed me with extra credit points to go to her <laughs> professional development meeting. And I went and I loved it. And we had Quicken Loans there, we had Sherwin-Williams, we had a few companies and they all were telling us like we're looking to hire EMU grads. So, so you know, the one question I gotta ask you before we close is you moved from California to Michigan. Mm. <laughs> so everybody's gonna ask you about the weather. You're giving up the weather and you're coming to our fabulous four seasons. Real quick, what do you think? You know, in California, the topic of everybody's conversation is, is traffic. Here it's weather. All right. <laughs> well, Dr. Ken Moore, we want to thank you very much. We welcome you to Eastern Michigan University. Sarah, thank you very much as well. We appreciate it. We all want you to go out and make it a great time, a great week, great month, and we'll check you out next time on EMU Today.